Okay, in the last video we talked about plate tectonics and how it's a grand unifying theory and it does a lot of the moving and shaking of creating landforms on Earth. Um, in the next three videos, this one and the next two, we're going to take a spin around the rock cycle. We're going to talk about different rocks, how we identify them and how they're formed, and then the landforms they make. And then in further videos, we're going to see how plate tectonics and these rocks uh, all sort of fit together. Okay, so here's the rock cycle. You may have been, you may be familiar with this from, you know, middle school or something where you learned about the three main types of rock, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Um, but what we've got here, basically this is a conceptualization of how rocks are formed and how they change from one form to another. Um, so for instance, here's our, our igneous rock is our uh, one type of rock. We've got sedimentary rock is another major type of rock. And then we've got metamorphic rock is a third major type of rock. And you can change form between uh, one and another. So let's talk about igneous rocks first. So um, molten rock is, uh, if that molten rock is above ground, it's called lava. If that molten rock is below ground, it's called magma. If either of those cool, we call that cooling crystallization. So it cools and solidifies from liquid molten rock into solid rock. And so that's what forms igneous rocks. Um, now, if you break up igneous rock or any other type of rock uh, with weathering, and then we transport it or erode it and move it to somewhere else, and when we break up rock, we, we create sediment. So sand, silt, clay, gravel, boulders, all those things are sediments. They're broken up pieces of rock. If we take those sediments and put them someplace low, like a lake basin or an ocean basin or just a valley bottom, and we layer them up on top of each other and compact them, uh, we have a process called lithification. That's where that sediment is compacted and cemented into sedimentary rock. And sedimentary rock is really cool because it has layers, often contains fossils, and tells you a lot about Earth's history. Um, if we take either sedimentary rock or igneous rock uh, and we bury it deep in the Earth, so we put it under tremendous amount of heat and pressure, um, we call that process metamorphism, and the result is metamorphic rock. This is rock that's been all twisted and tortured uh, and, and minerals have kind of become unstable and recrystallized again. And you can see in this picture here how that's sort of twisted, folded rock. Um, it doesn't melt. If it melts all the way, then, then we go back to lava, lava or magma. So we can melt any kind of rock um, and create lava or magma. And if that magma or lava cools, then we create igneous rock again. So um, this is basically the interactions between different rock types. Okay, let's talk about igneous rock. Let's talk about how and where igneous rock forms. Okay, so there's basically two main ways that we that we classify igneous rock. We can classify it based on its mineral composition, and we can classify it on where and how fast it cools. Okay, so mineral composition, let's start with that first. Uh, over here, um, let me draw a little box around here. So this is our, our four main type types of igneous rocks right here. And um, we can see that there's two columns here called mafic and felsic. And that refers to the mineral composition of those rocks. So mafic, um, we get the word mafic from two, two elements, magnesium and iron. Iron is Fe, so things that are ferrous, we often say that those, have, those contain iron. So mafic rocks have a lot of iron and magnesium. Um, they tend to be very dark in color, and they tend to be very heavy and dense. Right? Magnesium and iron are both very heavy elements, and so mafic rocks are very heavy. Um, felsic, over here, uh, we get felsic, as that's a, a contraction of feldspar. I can not write very well um, with this little mouse. S-P-A-R, feldspar, and silica. Um, so these are two uh, elements that are pretty lightweight. Actually, they're not, they're not elements, they're, they're uh, compounds. But feldspar and silica, so silica is quartz, remember SiO2, um, and feldspar is, is also a very, fairly light mineral. So they're light in color. You notice that these are, are a fair bit lighter, so rhyolite and granite are lighter in color than basalt and gabbro. Um, and they're also lighter in weight, so they're lighter, uh, they're lower density. Okay, so um, that's how we distinguish between mineral compositions. Right? 
feldspar uh, silica is felsic and magnesium and iron is mafic. Now the other way that we distinguish igneous rocks is by the, the rate of cooling. So do they cool fast or do they cool slow? And so basically rocks that cool from lava, so rocks that cool out on the surface, like right here, this lava flow, um, those are called extrusive rocks. Um, because they cool at the surface of the earth. They cool outside of, of the earth. Um, rocks that cool underground, they never get exposed to the air. Those are called intrusive rocks and they cool underground. Because they're underground, they cool slowly, right? They're insulated by the surrounding rock, so they lose heat less quickly and they, um, and they cool slowly. Uh, extrusive rocks cool very rapidly because they're exposed to the air and they cool very fast. Now, if you cool slowly, what that does is it gives these minerals time to aggregate into crystals. So we have large crystals uh, that form basically a coarse crystalline texture in an intrusive igneous rock. So down here, gabbro and granite are intrusive rocks. If you look at these closely, you can see this pretty well on the granite. You see those blobs of different minerals in there, right? There's some dark pieces and some light pieces and so on. Um, that's because those are large crystals of minerals and so you get a coarse texture and that means they cooled slowly underground as intrusive igneous rocks. Now rocks like basalt and rhyolite, those if you look closely you can't see blobs, you can't see big minerals in there um, because they, they didn't have time to form. They cooled too rapidly. So these are extrusive igneous rocks. Um, they cooled very fast out on the surface from lava um, and so you don't have minerals forming, okay? So we sometimes you'll hear besides extrusive and intrusive, extrusive rocks are sometimes called volcanic because they come out of volcanoes, and intrusive rocks are called plutonic. Uh, Pluton, after the, the Roman god of the underworld, they cool underground. Now we have a couple of other interesting igneous rocks here too. So if you look down here, um, we've got what we call porphyritic texture. Porphyritic has some large crystals. You see these sort of light colored crystals in here. It has some crystals that form because that rock started to cool slowly. Then something happens and that rock gets ejected out of a volcano or it gets, uh, gets uh, intruded up close to the surface and it cools more rapidly. So you can see the dark areas in here those don't have large crystals. So we have large crystals embedded in a matrix of that's not crystal or that doesn't have large crystals. And that's called porphyry or porphyritic texture. Now some other interesting textures are um, what we call pyroclastic. So stuff that gets ejected out of a volcano way up into the air um, and cools very, very rapidly. Um, those materials are called pyroclastic material. So pyro means fire and clast means a chunk, chunk of something, right? Clastic rocks have chunks in them. So pyroclastic fire chunk rocks. Um, so those things can be ash, um, and sometimes this ash can get welded together as it falls down and gets layered together and it's very hot. Um, we have volcanic bombs, so if we have a blob of molten lava that, that gets thrown up into the air, it takes this very aerodynamic shape like a bomb. Uh, and then we have pumice, and pumice is sort of frothy glass. Uh, it's got a um, uh, it's got a lot of air holes in it where gases have escaped. It's very very lightweight. In fact, pumice usually floats in water. So um, our main igneous textures are pyroclastic, extrusive, intrusive, and porphyritic. And our uh, our main um, chemical compositions or mineral compositions are mafic, which is dark and heavy, or felsic which is um, lightweight and light color. Okay, so there's also a third um, chemical composition or a third mineral composition of igneous rocks and that's called intermediate or sometimes called andesitic. Um, and let's, let's take a look at how some igneous rocks form and it'll make sense on how we get a, an intermediate uh, chem mineral composition. So here we have, here's plate tectonics again, right? So here we have um, a convergent plate boundary and we have oceanic lithosphere, right? So ocean crust and it's subducting under uh, continental crust, right? So the continental crust is made up of light buoyant rock. So most continental crust is felsic, right? Um, we have a lot of feldspar and silica. Um, SiO2 is silica. Um, okay, now ocean crust, remember, this is mostly uh, dense heavy rock. Uh, it's mostly basalt, which is a mafic 
extrusive rock. This is rock that's coming out of a, of a mid-ocean ridge somewhere, out of a divergent boundary, and cooling. And remember, that's made up of heavy rocks from deeper in the mantle. Okay, so we have our, our dense heavy rock subducting under our lighter continental rock. Now, what's happening here is um, we have, remember that, that ocean crust is... Um, that ocean crust is saturated with water, right? So the rock is, the little pore spaces between the rock is saturated with water. So as we have subduction down here, that water is driven off, it's heated and driven off into the mantle rock. And when you add water to mantle rock, it melts. And that's because that rock is so hot, but it's under so much pressure uh, that it's still solid. But if you add water, it, it melts and becomes uh, liquid rock. And so that molten liquid rock is less dense, and so it rises, it comes up through the lithosphere and it rises through, and as it eats through the lithosphere, it has to eat through this continental rock, and so it melts some of the rock around it, and that, uh, that host rock, or that country rock, as it's called, um, it gets assimilated into the magma. And so now the magma is, remember it was very mafic down here, because down here in the mantle we have um, a lot of magnesium and iron, we have a lot of heavy stuff, go back to the formation of the earth where you had heavy stuff. Um, so now we have heavy stuff down here, those mafic minerals, they, they go up through the continental crust and they incorporate some felsic minerals. And so then when this stuff comes out of a volcano, um, it's a mixture of both igneous, or it's a mixture of both mafic and felsic, and so it's andesitic. All right, so here is a nice summary of our most common igneous rocks. Um, so we summarize them, the columns here represent uh, mineral composition, right? So we have our felsic, which is our light colored, light weight rocks. We have our mafic, which is our dark and heavy rocks. And then we have intermediate, which is, is in the middle. Um, there are some other words here. So you might see uh, when you're reading, felsic is sometimes also called granitic. Intermediate is sometimes called andesitic. And mafic is sometimes called basaltic. And those are named after the, the main rocks that that represent those types. The other way we classify igneous rocks is by texture. So the rows here um, represent different textures. So we have coarse grained, and you may see the word phaneritic because geologists love to make up lots of different terminology. So uh, phaneritic just means coarse grained rocks that have large mineral crystals in them. We have fine grained rocks or aphanitic. Um, so they don't have large mineral crystals, they're very fine grained. Um, and then we have porphyritic. Remember we talked about that. It's um, large crystals embedded in a non-crystalline matrix. Okay, so if we have a felsic rock that's lightweight and light color, and it's coarse grained, then that rock is called granite. And you can see it's light colored and it's coarse grained. Uh, if we have a dark rock, so it's mostly dark gray or black, and it's uh, also coarse grained, that's called gabbro. And if we have something in the middle, it's sort of uh, in between, it's sort of grayish, light gray to dark gray. It has about half and half uh, light minerals and dark minerals, and it's coarse grained, that's called diorite. Now if we have fine grained rocks, a fine grained rock that's felsic is light in color with no crystals, that's called rhyolite. Um, an andesitic rock, so again, it's kind of a, a middle gray. Um, if, it's, if it's andesitic and it's, um, fine grained, then that's called andesite. And if a rock is dark and heavy, so it's mafic, uh, and it's fine grained, it's called basalt. Uh, and then you can have uh, granite porphyry if it's felsic and porphyritic. If it's gray, intermediate and intermediate and porphyritic, it's andesite porphyry. And if it's dark and porphyritic, it's basalt porphyry. So in this video, we've covered the different types of igneous rock and how you identify them. In the next video, we're going to talk about how you get different kinds of igneous landforms, both volcanic and plutonic landforms, and where those occur. So stay tuned for the next video.